Good morning. Before beginning this liturgy, please take out your cell phones and any other electronic devices you have with you today, and please turn them off or silence them. <clears throat> we welcome you to our liturgy celebration for the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Discipleship requires courage. God's call to faithful discipleship promises unimaginable blessings and requires radical trust in God's providence. Like the rich young man, we have futures to get ready. We cannot do it alone, for it is only with God that all things are possible. Our celebrant at this liturgy is Monsignor Norm, and our gathering song is Gather Us In. Please stand. away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you here to St. Dorothy Church in Glendora. We welcome all who are joining us online for this celebration this morning. In life, we can seek many things. We can look for riches, and most of us do. But how many of us will be looking for wisdom above everything? Wisdom is a gift from God for which we must pray. But wisdom will lead us to prefer the love of Christ Jesus to anything that the world offers. And that is the difficult part. We pray today then for wisdom and for the ability, the grace, to give ourselves entirely to the love of God. We pray now for mercy. Each of us may find within ourselves something that we must ask forgiveness for. And so let us pause to pray. sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy, Kyrieleison. Lord, have mercy, Kyrieleison. You came to call us sinners. Christ, have mercy, You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her Silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Fill us with your love. 
teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Make us glad for the days when you afflicted us, for the years when we saw evil. Fill us with your Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, What must I do to inherit eternal life? 
Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, teacher, All of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, His face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings, it is possible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, we have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, amen, I say to you, There is one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. The comedian uh, George Goebel once said, money cannot buy happiness, but money will do until happiness comes along. I think we all might feel that way, and we all can be tempted to believe that enough money will provide happiness in life. But there are many people who have found a way of wisdom that surpasses the wealth of the world. The great humanitarian Albert Schweitzer once said, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. And Winston Churchill has said, We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. 
In the Gospel according to Mark today, the rich man comes up and kneels before Jesus. Imagine a rich man kneeling before a poor man. The young man tells Jesus that he has kept all of the Ten Commandments from his earliest years. He is, what, he is asking if he is on the path to eternal life. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You are lacking in one, in one thing. What could that one thing be? His face falls when he hears the words of Jesus, Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Following Jesus is one thing. Giving up his possessions is another. The young man turns and goes away sad. Sometimes when we go shopping, we may find just the pair of shoes or very nice clothing that we want. But when we learn the price, it may be beyond what we are willing to pay. We may end up saying to the clerk, do you have something less expensive? The rich young man proposes to follow Jesus. But then Jesus reveals the cost. In effect, the young man says, do you have something less expensive? Jesus invites the rich man to step across a threshold, to leave behind the spirituality of his youth, and to take on another spirituality that abandons all for the sake of love. As each one of us move into the mature phase of our lives, it is the gaze of love that Jesus casts on each of us that enables us to abandon everything else. Francis of Assisi had considerable wealth from his parents and a very carefree life as a young man. But then a series of misfortunes caused a spiritual crisis for him and revealed to Francis the emptiness of his life. Praying before the crucifix, he heard Jesus calling him to go and repair the church. He gradually learned what this meant and found the grace and the courage to give up his family inheritance and even the very fine clothes his father had given him. He felt the gospel calling him to a higher wisdom than the enjoyment of earthly wealth. He began to summon the people of his city and the neighboring cities to listen to the gospel call to seek first the kingdom of God, to learn to live in simplicity and trust in God. He began to help the poor in and around Assisi, and he cared for the sick. He found perfect joy in this way of life, and he entered upon his life's work, helping the church of his time to recover the true meaning of the gospel to accept the sacrifices that it calls for, and to long for its promise of eternal life. And what is involved in all of this is what the scriptures this morning call the gift of wisdom. The first reading this has these words about wisdom. All gold in view of her is a little sand, before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Even our bodily health and our physical attractiveness do not rank with wisdom. 
and the realities of popularity and political power and status are not to be preferred to wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is a gift that, from God that comes to us through prayer. It doesn't come from attending Stanford or an Ivy League school. It is guidance into the ways of God that will lead to a splendor and joy that human wealth cannot provide. We should understand that the gospel is not calling us to a life of misery. Jesus does not want to take everything away from us. But his words teach clearly that at the time of our death, all earthly wealth will be taken away from us. We will then have only that inner spirit of wisdom, our trust in God, and the works of love that we have given away that will carry us into the eternal joy of God's kingdom. To the rich man, Jesus says, you are lacking in one thing. As I listen to those words of Jesus this morning, I have anxiety in my heart and a quiver in my voice. And as I kneel down to offer my usual prayer, Lord, I am willing to give you everything. And the Lord tells me what that one thing is. My heart is shaken, and I say, not that, please, Lord, not that. And Jesus says, you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. What is the one thing in my life that might be hampering my response to a deeper discipleship? I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Beyond health and attractiveness, I loved her. Yet all good things together came to me in her company and countless riches at her hand. Let us join together in making our profession of Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us come to Jesus as little children. May he embrace the needs that we place before him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and its leaders, that we will continue to uphold the sanctity of the human family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations and peoples, may the peace of Christ turn all swords into plowshares resulting in healing and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church during the forward in mission jubilee year, that we raise our eyes to see the loving gaze of Jesus and giving our life to him as his disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, and all who are in need, that they may receive love, respect, and the material assistance they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations in our faith community, for the men and women, May God inspire them to follow his call, and may he give them the gift of understanding to discern their service in the church, in the priesthood, in the diaconate, or consecrated life, especially our seminarians, Tommy Green and Enrique Heseno. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the full recovery of the sick, especially Dick Paulus and Penny Paulus, may they experience the healing touch of Jesus, the divine physician. We pray to the Lord. For those who have passed from this life into eternal life, especially Robert Venegas and Scott Allerich. May they be swiftly ushered into the eternal banquet of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For the special intention of this Mass, for all of the parishioners of St. Dorothy's, and we want to include again a remembrance of Julian Blandino, the happy repose of his soul and for his family, and for the happy repose of Robert Sesculini and his family. Their funerals were held this week. And for any other intentions that we remember in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to see you more clearly, to follow you more nearly, and to love you more dearly, so that under your gentle urging, we may make steady progress along the road that leads to your kingdom. We ask this through you, Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please join me in singing, Make Your Home in Me.
place to rest every heart a man every king a throne but the word made flesh no earthly home your burdens light and your yoke is easy your name is love and your grace is free Lord, you come to me in your homelessness, burning in your eyes, such a great distress. Who will heal your wounds? Who will make your bed? I will comfort you. I will share my bread. Your burdens lie. Pray, my brothers, my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Dorothy, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, 
In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. <clears throat> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our song for communion is the cry of the poor.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We pray now the prayer in the time of the coronavirus. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your son, Jesus. Amen. Please, please be seated for a minute. Oops. Here. We invite you to enjoy a delicious meal while supporting St. Dorothy School on Family Spirit Night, Wednesday, October 20th at Chili's in Glendora, either to dine in or to pick up something for home. 15% of your purchase will go to St. Dorothy's School when you mention the fundraiser. In the preparation of your child for the Sacraments of Reconciliation and First Holy Communion, St. Dorothy's Religious Education Program is still taking registrations for all classes from preschool to middle school. Please contact Bernie Martin, the Director of Faith Formation. The First World Mission Sunday Collection took place in 1927. And since then, each year in October, the entire global church comes together to support missions and missionaries throughout the world. This year, World Mission Sunday Collection will take place on October 24th. The St. Dorothy Pumpkin Patch will once again be returning. Come and choose your pumpkin on Sunday, October 24th, from 10 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon out on the field. Pick your pumpkin for a $5 to $10 donation and help our youth ministry here at St. Dorothy Parish. And save the date, please, for Saturday, November the 6th at 10 o'clock in the morning for Father Ron's installation mass of a pastor of our parish. There will be a reception following the Mass. All are invited. Uh, please RSVP through our website or call the parish office. We want to thank all of our lectors, our Eucharistic ministers, the ushers, and the music ministry, and our sacristans, and this morning, Alan and Lizzie for leading us in our music today. And we are grateful to all who are willing to give of themselves to help out to be part of the ministries here at St. Dorothy Church. So now it's time to go home and see whether your favorite team has survived. As, Father, as Deacon uh, Phil says, to see whether your prayers have been answered. 
So let us stand to conclude our celebration. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you please join me in singing, God has chosen me. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to set a light a new fire. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring to birth a new kingdom on earth. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. Thank you, this beautiful young lady.